everything pertaining to the creation and the creator can be found in this human body. Water, fire, air, everything in the human body. It is always lower than the entire human body. A representation of the characteristic of Ard. If we had the opportunity to dive into the body and visit the soul, the soul will be in every part of the human body and the human body is a representation of this entire makhluk. Translation, we will show them our signs in the universe and in their own selves until it becomes clear, manifest, clear to them that this, yani this religion, the Qur'an, is the truth. Is it not sufficient in regard to your Lord that He is a witness over all things? Sadaqallahu al-Azim, Allah has spoken the truth. My beautiful family audience, we are discussing the articles of and that's what we have been discussing for the last few weeks. And we made mention that the articles of faith have been made mention in the Quran as a reference, Surah Al Baqarah, Surah number 2, verse 285, the second last verse of the longest surah of the glorious Quran. Aman al Rasul, bima unzila ilayhi min rabbihi wal mu'minu. Then Nabi Akareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through his teachings has made mention of the articles of faith as well. Then scholarship that dives into the ocean that was left by the Nabi of Allah, they have shed further light upon the articles of faith. And as we made mention last night that this entire topic according to scholarship, is known as ilm kalam ya fiqh akbar It is known as ilm kalam or fiqh akbar And why this knowledge, this science is so important? Because if a person falls short to any article of faith, he cannot be labeled as a Muslim. And anyone that wants to retain the title Muslim or wants to enter into the tent of Islam, he needs to accept the articles of faith. And the first article of faith is about Allah. So it is to believe in Allah Almighty. As we know that there are different speakers in the world, atheists, people that deny the existence of the Creator, they speak well and they confuse the innocent mind of mankind. But if we were to study the journey of humanity from day one till today, all human beings have an understanding of a supreme being. But what is the reality of that supreme being? that cannot be understood without divine intervention. And those that try to understand and try to solve this question, this riddle, without divine intervention, they fall into a very deep, dark hole. And that's how shirk, polytheism, was introduced, it originated. Now, the verse that I recited is a very important verse. You would remember last week, I made mention of the story of the diamond. Can I get a nod? And that diamond was in the pocket of the thief throughout the entire night. He was looking left, right, center, not knowing that the thing, the object, the diamond that he was finding searching for was in his own pocket. And this is what Allah Almighty is saying in verse 53 of surah number 41 that look inside you. Look how Allah Almighty has designed you and created you. 
We have many, many doctors in our community, in our Muslim community. And there are many, many doctors that are specialists. Specialization of the heart. They have attained excellence in the mind, excellence in the gut. There are some people that are studying the blood, blood cell. But even if you speak to these guys, to these specialists, they will say that there are certain times that we have to say that we do not know. And these doctors are brilliant. OP1s, OP2s, you can't get into medicine just like that, very intelligent. And they only study one part of the human being. One very small part. But at the end they will say that uh, we do not know. I've spoken to many brain surgeons. They'll say that we do not know. So complex this human being. And that's why this is a masterpiece that Allah Almighty has created. And that's why Allah Almighty introduces you and me and my dear sisters to look at yourself. Because this whole world, we believe, what do we look at? When we look at this world, we say that this world is a creation. What do we say? That this world is a creation and it is run by a creator. Makhluk and Khalik. This world is a creation. Everything in it is a creation, a makhluk, and it is run by the creator, a Khalik. We need to find the Khalik and the makhluk in this human body. We need to find the makhluk in this human body and we have to find a representation of the creator of the makhluk in this human body. And that's what Allah Almighty is demanding. This is the challenge. If we look deeply, we'll find everything. We don't have to look too far. We don't have to study too much. Everything pertaining to the creation and the creator can be found in this human body. And you remember that we started off last week by speaking about dust. Now the earth is known as Ard. The earth is known as Ard. And we know that we have been created by Ard. By dust. And that's why we made mention that right at the end of our journey, we will be buried in the dust. And then we will decompose. And dust will become dust. So the whole earth is dust. It is dirt. And I would like you to remember a very important point. Dust is something that is humble. Dust is something that is humble. You, me, every makhluk on this earth walks upon it. But it accommodates. It doesn't show arrogance. It remains on the ground. And it doesn't become our enemy. It says, all right, now you have passed away. I will embrace you. I will allow you to rest inside me. We are made from dust. And if we try to change the disposition, if we try to change that which we have been made from, we are doing a disservice to ourselves. We are allowing ourselves to rot. So if we are not adorned with humility, and humility is the characteristic of Ard. And we are created from Ard. We are going against nature. And the greatest arrogance is not to bow in front of Allah. The greatest arrogance is not to place this in front of Allah Almighty. Then for the Muslims, the greatest arrogance is not to place this in front of Allah. When the Mu'azzin says, Hayya ala salah and Hayya ala al the greatest arrogance. Allah Almighty calls us towards the prayer, towards success, and we are finding success outside the prayer. Allah is saying, come to me, I am telling you this is success, and we are running left, right, center, just like the person trying to find the diamond. Allah is saying, I'm giving you success. We say, we don't want your success, we want to find our own success. 
So the first representation of this world that we find inside ourselves is the arud. It is the dirt. It is the dust. Do not empty yourself from the characteristic of arud. Always remember that you need to be humble. Then we made mention that in the world, there is mountains. There are mountains. And these mountains give stability to the earth. Allah Almighty has given us a bone structure. These bones represent the mountains. If you remove the mountains, the arud cannot sustain itself. It cannot remain steady. There will be a mighty wobble. Huh? There will be tremors. Likewise, if we were to take out the bones, small or big, what will happen? This body cannot sustain itself. It will drop. There will be a wobble. So these bones, these are a representation of the mighty mountains that Allah Almighty pegged into the earth. Jibala Autada. Then we made mention that on this earth, there are trees. There's fertile land and there is barren land. Fertile land, there is many, many trees. Lush, green, soothing to the eyes. And then there is barren land where you find no trees. We see a representation of that in the human body. The trees are the hair. So this is lush green. Yeah? And they, this is barren. The bottom of your feet are barren. There's no hair there. Yeah? This is like grass. Grass? No grass. Little grass. Then we made mention of animals. There's animals in the human body as well. And we gave the example of one of my friends who used to eat 20 rotis at one time. And later on they found out that he had big worms inside himself. And we know of bacteria. These are hayawanat, the lice that we have in our head. These are all animals. Then we made mention that the irrigation system of this world is amazing. Water goes from downstairs, upstairs, and then it comes back and we benefit. Allah Almighty allows it to rain. Sometimes it is steady. Sometimes it's torrential. Sometimes it's too much. That's why we make the dua, Allahumma sayyiban nafiyah, that Ya Allah make the rain beneficial. Because sometimes the rain falls and it transforms into floods. And it is disastrous for the farmers, for the crop, for the food stock, so on and so forth. Likewise, we start running. And we start sweating. This is like a rain. We start sweating and water drops. Then we find that in the world there are different kinds of water. As I made mention, sweet water, salty water, bitter water, sour water. And we find all these waters in the human being. Sweet water in the mouth. Eh? Salty water. Then we find that there is bitter water in the gallbladder. And then there is acidic water in the stomach to assist the digestion of the food. So all kinds of water in the human being. Then we made mention and we ended here about the air, oxygen. And sometimes we all know that when there is a ratuba, humidity, eh, and it stops, the wind stops, what happens? We don't feel comfortable. We feel restless. We turn on the fans. We take deep breaths. Likewise, there's air inside us. If it exits and we pass wind, we feel good about it. And if it stays inside, we feel restless. Then there is hot air. There is cold air. You breathe inside. You inhale. It is cold. You breathe outside. You exhale. It is hot. Subhanallah. All the representations in this one human body. Then there's fire as well. You rub your hands a few seconds with intensity, and your body becomes hot. This is all fire inside you as well. Water, fire, air, everything in the human body. And then we look at this world and we see upstairs and there's a sky. We look down and we see the arud. This is the sky of the human body. And our feet are the arud. And if we look up, we find the sun. 
we find the moon. This is the sun. This is the moon. Sun, moon. In the, in the sky of the human body. It's ajeeb. Everything is there. And then the feet is the arud because the feet is humble. It remains down. It is always lower than the entire human body. A representation of the characteristic of arud. Then we made mention that no country, no world runs without a government. There's a government in the human body. The heart is the king. And these body parts are the khuddam. These are the servants. And they serve the heart. That's why Nabi Akrim said, Allah in the fil jasadi mudra. That in the human body there is a piece of flesh. If that piece of flesh is intact, healthy, everything will be healthy. And if it is rotten, it is sick, then everything will be rotten and sick. Allah wahi al qalb, and that is the heart. If the president, the prime minister, the king is rotten, then it will give orders to the body parts that will represent evil. It will be sinister. It will not be beneficial. And if the heart is in a good position. Right. That's where we ended last week. Now I said I'm going to further this. So you've, you've understood what I said? Can I get a nod? All right, right now. Let's go to the next part. This human body. Now we're going, this is a representation of the makhluk. Now we want to find Allah inside us. So we have found the makhluk of Allah inside us. True. We have found water and all kinds of water. We have found dirt. And we have found fire, we have found hayawanat, animals, and we have found the ashjar, the trees. We have found everything in the human body. But all this is to guide us to the one that has created all that. How do we find Allah inside us? Because Allah Almighty says, Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq wa fi anfusihim. Aapne andar dekho, Allah nazar aapko. How? So, I'm going to put a question to you. What holds this body? Let's say Imam Uzair is declared dead. What does that mean? Ruh is gone. If the Ruh exits, it is extracted, the person is declared dead. Now once the person is declared dead, does this body sustain itself? Does the body sustain itself, its health? No. In a very short time, the body starts to rot. It starts to decompose. There is a stench. Meaning that there is something inside the human body that keeps the body in now, this human body is a representation of the creation of Allah. The ruh inside is a representation of Allah. Just like the ruh, if it exits, the entire human body that is a representation of the makhluk of Allah will collapse. If there is no ruh, meaning no Allah, this world cannot sustain itself. Just like the body cannot sustain itself without the ruh, this world cannot be sustained without Allah. We find that inside ourselves. Then, olive color. This is a bit, I may be a bit uh, red, ruddy in complexion up here. A little bit red. Olive color. A bit darker on this side. Then you pick up your, you know, your, your, your undergarment. And it may be a bit whiter because the sun doesn't get there. So there's different colors in one human body. But if I was to ask you, what is the color of the soul? You'll say, we don't know. There's no color of the soul. Likewise, Allah gives color to this world, but Allah has no color. Allah gives color to this entire world. Everything that we see, the different colors that are attractive, that are amazing, that are soothing to the eyes. Allah gives, just like the body has different colors. But if you were to ask me, what is the color of the soul? We don't know. 
There's no color to the soul. Likewise, Allah is the one that gives loan, alwan, colors. But we do not know of his color. He has no color. Got it? Let's go one step further. A lot of people say, where is Allah? A lot of people say, where is Allah? Of course, Allah Almighty in the Quran in many places says, wherever, wherever there's two people, the third is Allah. Wherever there's three people, the fourth is Allah. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ Allah is closer to you than your jugular vein. But put all these verses to the side. If you were allowed to enter into the body and visit the soul, where would you find the soul? Everywhere. You will find the soul everywhere. The soul is not confined to one piece of the body. Now keep in mind the body is the entire world. This body is a representation of the entire world. People say, where is Allah? You will say, all right, if we had the opportunity to dive into the body and visit the soul, the soul will be in every part of the human body and the human body is a representation of this entire makhluk. That's where Allah is. That's why the very famous incident that took place, a dialogue between an atheist with Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, cutting the dialogue short, just one segment of it, he said, where is Allah? And he had a bucket of milk. He called for a bucket of milk. So the atheist said, where is Allah? And he said that, you tell me, is there butter in this milk? He said, yes, there is butter in this milk. He said, can you see it? He said, no. He said, in which drop is there butter? He said, in every drop. He said, likewise, you can't see Allah and Allah is everywhere. Okay. Bucket of milk, butter is in every drop of milk. But you can't see it. You can't see it. We can't see Allah, but we inshallah will see Allah. The, the Shia brothers, their belief and the Mu'tazila, Mu'tazila and the Shiites, their belief is even in Jannah you will not see Allah. So it's, it's their belief. They said, you can't see Allah. You cannot see Allah. The Mu'tazila, this was a group in the past, and the Shiites, till today, they have this belief, you can't see Allah Almighty. La tudriku al-absar wa huwa yudriku al-absar. That's their belief. So in this world, it's like a bucket. The butter hasn't come out yet. But if the butter does come out, can we see it? And is every drop contributing to, walk, to making that butter? Yes. So inshallah, we believe that we will see Allah Almighty on the other side. Now, listen to the next part. So we can't see Allah. Right? If we were to dive inside, Allah is, every, you know, um, we, we will see that the soul, the root is everywhere. In the tip of my fingernail, in my hair. But now I'm going to ask you a question. My dear sisters, I hope you're watching this. If brother Hafiz Khalid came here right now, all right, and he plucked my hair, will I survive? A little bit painful. He'll pluck my hair. A little bit painful, but I will survive. Number one. Then brother Imran comes. Imran comes and he has a needle and he pokes it in my hand. More pain than plucking the hair. Then another Imran comes. Imran Kasarsa, mashallah. And he brings a needle and he pokes it in my heart. Ooh. I'm not going to survive that. True. The soul is everywhere. The soul is everywhere in the entire human body. But there's a different reaction. There's a different pain level. You pluck the hair, that's it. You poke the hand, oof, don't do that, that hurt. You poke the heart, yeah. I can't speak after that. True. Now, Allah is everywhere. But Allah's ta'alluq with Baytullah is like the heart. Allah's ta'alluq with Baytullah is like the heart. If you poke it, there's going to be adab. Because it's the death of the soul. 
That's why when Abraha came, he had ill intent towards Baytullah, Allah destroyed it. Allah destroyed Abraha and his armies. Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabi al Surah 105. If somebody comes in the local masjid and desecrates the masjid, will the whole world stand up? No. The locals will stand up. The locals will stand up. That is just like this. Poke, it feels painful. Not bad as this. If somebody, if anyone has ill intent towards Baytullah, the whole Muslim community will stand up. 1.6, 1.7 billion Muslims will stand up. Okay, you come towards Baytullah because that's the heart. Allah's ta'alluq with Baytullah is very, very different than the ta'alluq that Allah has with this masjid. That's, that, that's why that's Baytullah, the house of Allah. This is Holland Park Masjid. That is the heart, this is the hand. That's why if somebody desecrates this, disrespects this, Muslims from Brisbane will stand up. And if somebody comes to my house and robs me, it is like plucking the hair, my family will come together. So you see the ta'alluq? Allah is everywhere. But his ta'alluq is different. His laws are different. Does it make sense? All right. Let's keep moving onwards. Now, <coughs> How many souls do you have inside you? One or two or three or four? Kulu wallahu ahad one. How many souls do you have inside? One. One soul controls the entire human body. The body represents this world. The soul is a representation of Allah. That means one Allah controls this entire world. You'll say why? Allah Almighty says in Surah Anbiya, Surah number 21, verse number 22, what does Allah Almighty say? لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَا إِلَّا اللَّهُ لَفَسَدَتَا فَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَرْشِ عَمَّا يَصِفُونَ Had they been therein, in the heavens and in the earth, gods, multiple gods, نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ besides Allah, then verily both would have been ruined. Make mention what that means. Both will be ruined. Both gods. Glorified be Allah, the Lord of the throne, above what they attribute Him. In one masjid, two imams, and the masjid can't run. In one masjid, two imams, masjid will not run. I'm telling you now. In one house, two leaders, doesn't run. Somebody has to give up. Husband has to give up or the wife has to give up. But if both say no, it's my way or the highway, and then the wife says it's my way or the highway, then there's only going to be a highway. That's what's, that's the thing. You can't have two lions in one den. Two people can't wear one trouser. They're going to rip it. Two people can't wear one shirt at one time. They're going to rip it. Me and Imran stand up and we try to wear one shirt. It's going to be ripped. That's what Allah Almighty is saying. If there were multiple gods, two gods, there will be facade. This whole world will be ruined. One will say, like let's say there's two souls inside us. One soul will say, the body should feel hungry. The other soul, Say, no, you shouldn't feel hungry. There's always a muqabla between them. One Allah, he will say, give him a child, baby boy. The other Allah says, give him a baby girl. Because there's two. Now you can say they can compromise. Two gods can compromise. They will say, all right, for one year, whatever decisions I make, you have to accept it. And then God number two, na'udhu billah, he says, following year, whatever I say, you have to accept it. How can God be God when he has to compromise? God can't compromise. God is not the one that compromises. Allahu Samad. All comes back to Surah Ikhlas. Allahu Samad. Allah is independent. Allah be niyaz hai. How can God be God? How can Allah be Allah if he has to compromise? So you have to believe. 
Just like the body is sustained by one soul, this entire world is run by one creator. And that's what Allah Almighty says. لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَةٌ إِلَّا اللَّهُ لَفَسَدَتَ Got it? All right. Now we're going to try to end it. We're going to end this topic of Allah and move on next week. But I'm going to make mention of a few things. All right. These are stories. Right. And I would like you to remember these stories. How did intelligent people, very, very intelligent people, recognize the Creator? I've given you this uh, presentation tonight. Look at yourself. You'll find Allah. You'll find the entire creation. You will marvel at the greatness of Allah Almighty. But great people, they look at things differently. So Imam Shafi, rahmatullahi, one of the great Muslim jurists, somebody came to him and said, how did you recognize Allah? He said, I recognized Allah by a mulberry tree. Shatut Kadracht, Tut, Shatut, Melbury tree. He said, I looked at it and I found there's a tree, right? Water comes, it gives its nourishment. There's wind that is blowing. I see that there are leaves, they are identical. One leaf is receiving what the other leaf is receiving. Same environment, same water, there's no difference. But suddenly what happens is, and I am amazed by this, that a cow comes and starts to eat the leaf, the mulberry tree leaf, it starts to eat it. And it walks away. After a little while, the identical leaf is eaten by a deer, hiran, and then that hiran, that deer, walks away. Then after a little while, there is a worm that is eaten from that leaf, and then that worm walks away. Then I find that there is a, um, there is a, have we spoken about the deer? Yeah, the deer. Deer, the worm, and the, the cattle. So these are animals that are eaten from this. Then they go and they sit in the corner, these animals. And I see that the end product that comes out of their body after eating identical leaves is very different. I see that the cow, it eats the leaf and the end product is filth. Filth comes out. I see the silkworm, it eats the same leaf and it produces silk. I see the hiran, the deer, it is the same leaf, no extra ingredients, same leaf, and it makes musk. He said that who allowed this change to take place in the body after taking the same fuel? How can there be a change? Who is making this change inside? Allah. Ya Allah. Allah is making that change. It's like you got a car and you put unleaded and you drive. I put unleaded in my car and I fly. You say, how? It's the same machine. Her heart, a liver, kidney, stomach. How can there be a difference? The one that is making a difference inside that body after taking the same food, the same fuel, is the one that created that and allowed the change, and his name is Allah. So Imam Shafi said, that's how I understood Allah. They asked Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, amazing, one of the great Muslim jurists. He said that, I looked at this fort, and I looked at this fort from all sides. I went around this fort, and I found that it was colored white outside and golden inside. And there was no windows. No windows. Nothing could go inside and nothing could exit. And suddenly, the wall breaks of this fort. And a creature exits from this castle, from this fort, where there was no entry point and where there was no exit point. This creature exits 
and immediately it recognizes its friend and foe. Talking about the chicken. It is a castle. There is no hole outside. Nothing goes in, nothing comes out. It is white outside and golden inside. The wall breaks, it hatches. The chicken comes out and immediately it goes and finds shelter under the wing of the mother chicken. Who taught this chicken inside that this is your friend? And this is your mother. And if it sees the cat approaching, it starts running. Who told this chicken in that egg, in that fort, that this billy, this kitta, this cat is your enemy? He said, this was enough for me to recognize that there is Allah. Ajeeb. Imam Abu Hanifa once, he was cornered by atheists in Iraq. And they said, we have had enough of you. Imam Abu Hanifa said, look, you can do whatever you want with me because they came with ill intent to murder him. He said, you can do whatever you want with me, but let me have a dialogue with you. I will prove that there is Allah. Tomorrow at 4 o'clock, we will meet at the Jami Masjid. I said, all right, fine. MashaAllah. Barish? MashaAllah. That's Allah. Three barish. Send in the barish. Yeah? So at 4 o'clock, those people are waiting there. Imam Abu Hanifa doesn't arrive. Now, he was very punctual. He arrives at 5 o'clock. Now, they are angry towards Imam Abu Hanifa. They don't like him anyway because they're going to debate with him. And then he comes one hour late. So now they started to debate with Imam Abu Hanifa and they said, why did you come late? He said, look, I was waiting on the other side of the river. There was no boat and suddenly a tree dropped in front of me. And without the contribution of anyone, planks were made out of the tree. Then without the contribution of anyone, these planks came together and they formed themselves as a vessel, as a boat. Then I was looking, who is going to be the captain of this boat? And out of the blue, there was a person standing there and he brought me to you. They said, we thought you were an intelligent person, but it seems like you have become insane. How can this be possible? Imam Abu Hanifa said, if that is not possible, how can this entire world run itself without a captain? Can't run without a captain. We have run out of time. I'm going to end on the last thing. If you were to ask me what I think, me as Imam Muzab, as how do we recognize Allah Almighty, all this is fine, mashallah, profound, but I go, one, I go to a different dimension. Let's say Brother Mubarak. I know Brother Mubarak for the last 26 years. I truly believe he's a trustworthy person and he's truthful. And Brother Mubarak one day comes and he says, Imam Uzair, can I tell you, there's an accident on the road. So there's a traffic jam on Nursery Road, on Logan Road. Don't go this way. If you want to come to my house, go down this road. Should I accept his word? He's truthful. I've never found him to lie. He's truthful, so I'll accept his word. Who is the most truthful creation of Allah? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu If I can accept the word of Mubarak, why can't we accept the word of the most truthful makhluk of Allah Almighty when he says that there is Allah? That's how I look at this. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says there is Allah. He bows in front of Allah. Even his worst enemies could not label him as a liar. فَقَدْ لَبِسْتُ فِيكُمْ عُمُرًا مِّن قَبْلِ Surah number 10, Surah Yunus verse number 16. I have lived amongst you years and years. They knew that. They could never say that he's a liar. Yes, they said he's a sorcerer, but they never said he's a liar. He was known as Sadiqul Amin. When Sadiqul Amin is saying, Allah ha. Isn't that enough for us? If Sadiqul Amin is saying, Allah ha, there is Allah. Isn't that enough? I'm going to end with the words of Mulana Jalaluddin Rumi. Man arafa nafsa, arafa rabba. 
Mulana Jalaluddin Rumi rahmatullah says, Man arafa nafsa, a person who recognizes himself, arafa rabba, he recognizes Allah Almighty. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin, fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-raheem. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mashallah.